This is Ronald Dilsa II, and I want to invite you to check out the Ronald Dilsa II podcast. The Ronald Dilsa II podcast dives deep into the business of producing film, television, and multimedia. With over a decade of experiences in producing and teaching in the entertainment industry, I thought it was time to drop some knowledge into the world from my own experiences. Not only will you hear countless topics from me to motivate you on your own journey, you'll also hear about the journeys of some amazing individuals I've been super blessed to work with. And guess what? I'm still on my own journey. So get your pens and paper ready. You might learn something. You can check out the Ronald Dilsa Second Podcast on all your favorite podcast platforms. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you now in thanksgiving for this podcast. Thank you for the listeners tuning in. We pray that this show will be a blessing for their ears and may it be a word for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. What's up, kings? What's up, queens? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of God, Family, and Business with Ronald Dills II and Monique Dills. Yes. Welcome, welcome, everyone. Welcome to another podcast show with Ronald Dills II and Moni Dills. Hey. So tonight we have an episode. Um, episode. The topic is called the assignment. Mm-hmm. The assignment. All right. So we hope you are ready for this one. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is a tough one, y'all. This is a tough one. Mm. The assignment. So what's going on, my lovely queen? How are you I'm doing? I'm doing mighty well. I'm, by God's grace, how are Amen. you? Amen. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Blessed to Amen. have Amen. this wonderful opportunity to do another podcast with my queen. You know, Amen. we're I'm, very I'm, busy. We It's so we hard are. to get us to sit down together Yes, with all the busy, yes. uh, busy business, busy work. Yes. And mm-hmm. our two sons definitely yes. keep us busy. <laughs> <laughs> a baby and a toddler. So, so so I'm yes. glad we we have this time and um, we're yes. able to praise the Lord to reflect and and share with the world you Amen. know this wonderful Amen. journey God has us on. Amen. Amen. And so the assignment um, is the title of this podcast episode. And um, to give you a little history about the assignment, um, we were actually um, we attended um, our neighbors, one of our neighbors, um, back in the day during this time. Um, invited us over for service one Sunday. And we was like, Hey, why not? You know, we'll go over and, and show our face, you know, um, during this time, um, there's a lot going on as well. And so we said, why not? We'll go check it out and, and see how it is. It gives us opportunity to get to know them a little more and, and, you know, just, and see how service is with them. And so, uh, we went over and, and had a wonderful time, you mm-hmm. know, wonderful service with them. And, we actually got the opportunity. We walked over, so it was yeah, uh, literally right around, behind us. Live right behind us, mm-hmm. yes. And so um, during that service, after the service, we talked to um, the pastor, our neighbor, and his wife, and and they were able to um, you know bless us and and tell us some wonderful news. And one qu- um, question he 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 asked us was, "Are you all ready for your assignment?" And we and Monique was looking mm. at each other like, uh, yeah, we, you know, we ready, you know, we thinking, you know, we didn't know what he was talking about, but we was just like, well, it's obviously an assignment from God. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe it's hopefully, you know, to be able to raise a child soon. You know, we didn't know, you know, mm-hmm. it was having a baby soon. We were trying at this time. So we didn't know, you know, um, but <laughs> as you will, as you all know, who follow us and as you will find out more information during this episode, um, that assignment was a lot more than we expected it to be. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> so indeed, indeed. it was a really, really big assignment. And indeed. so 
that's what this episode is all about. And so uh, let's get digging in. Let's dig in. So um, so to get started with tonight, my first question for uh, my lovely queen is, you know, why don't you share how long we were trying to get pregnant um, again? I know we covered this before, but how long, you know, we kind of started out here. OK, um, first, I want to say you look mighty beautiful over oh. there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, mighty beautiful. Thank you. I mean, uh, you, you know, know I'm I pre- just thankful to God it. I get I appreciate to, it. to have this view oh. right here oh. Oh. of oh. my king. Oh, dude, it, is your view like... <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's like that when you look over. Oh, okay, did. I was wondering. All right, cool, cool. Me too. Amen. Amen. Me too, baby. Me too. Amen. <laughs> and I love this time. I love this time together. Um, of reflection. Yes. Um. Oh, so we were trying. Um. Well, it was probably less than a year still because mm-hmm. we got married in 2017 mm-hmm. publicly. Because we got married with the courts at, in 2016, but publicly 2017. And then we were trying from that point. Um, and we went to the doctor uh, maybe about six months mm-hmm. after yeah. um, when we didn't get pregnant, just to make sure everything was going well. Mm-hmm. And we did that because I had um, previous surgery um, prior and we discussed that in an early episode but um we were trying for about six months went to the doctor and um let us know um after a couple of scans that i did that mm. the fibroids were back and it will be difficult to get pregnant without mm. surgery right. and um they wanted to move forward with that but he said we'll give you three months to try again um, on your own mm. and if nothing then come back have the surgery and we'll go from there right right wow. so we were given the three months and um we tried on our own we just gave it to god at that point we surrendered everything to mm-hmm. god and um literally so it was february so literally or march april may that's three months literally three months that's when we found out that we were pregnant. Yes. Right before then. So God Very when I tell much, you, yeah. God just stepped right in and said, mm-hmm. Here you go, my son, and here you go, my daughter, with this beautiful blessing. And that was the the news. Yeah. And so what's what's really like, you know, this is the overall, but just imagine what we were feeling, what Monique was feeling, especially during this time. And how the enemy can easily try to play with your mind to make you feel a certain way, like you're not doing what you need to do for your body or you're mm-hmm. not, you know, all these crazy thoughts that mm-hmm. can go easily start going into your mind. And oh, so yeah. um, so it's very important, you know, um, to just stay prayed up, you and know, surrender. And, and surrender surrender it all. Surrender yeah. your will. I think what made will. it so special, which I've heard this before from a lot of close friends is when you stop worrying about it and thinking mm-hmm. about it is when it happens, you mm-hmm. know, and that's that whole surrendering part. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So, so yeah, so that's, that's pretty much, you know, the, um, the start of all of this, you know, and so from there, you know, um, how did you, you know, how did we find out? I mean, how did you find out that we were pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> well, my cycle was very like on point. Um, mm-hmm. I always had a regular cycle. Um, so literally it would come like clockwork, like mm-hmm. every 28 days on the dot. So when it didn't come, it was kind of like, what's going on? You know? Mm-hmm. Um, so I remember it being late and I was like, okay, well, I'm going to give it some time. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> let me give it about two weeks. Um, let's see what happens. So nothing came. Um, so I think from that point I was like, well, maybe I'll wait a little bit longer. (laughs) Uh Maybe it's going to come. I could be stressed out. Um, work was crazy. Um, work was always crazy then. Um, but you know, sometimes stress, um, can delay anything. So, um, we we were on a different diet um, at the time. No sugar. We were working out crazy. Um, so I 
things like that to change. So I just gave it a couple of weeks. I probably gave it about three weeks. I was late. And then um, I said, okay, it didn't come in three weeks. So let me take a test. Mm-hmm. And um, I do remember taking, um, going into the bubble bath mm-hmm. and um, coming out. I felt real dizzy, mm-hmm. like, like <clears throat> just dizzy, different. So I was like, okay. Um, it's like the spirit was talking to me. You might want to go ahead and take that test. Mm-hmm. So um, I did feel nauseous. Um, it's just a little bit. Um, so I went ahead and bought a test. Um, I remember um only told one person at work at the <laughs> time about it because I bought a test. And I was like, I'm going to go ahead and do this. But you can't tell nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so went home and did it. Um, I was trying to surprise you, actually. I'm but so um, he came in and saw the bag. Like, I was trying to get the bag <laughs> upstairs to, um, and hide it in the bathroom. <laughs> but he saw me with it. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do this you now. Your husband pay so, attention to everything. Yes, I you know, do. Can't get anything by him, I promise. I mm-hmm. So you were right there. Um, when I took the test, went ahead, peed on it, put it on the counter. <laughs> wow, okay. <laughs> and then we waited. <laughs> okay. Hey, we telling it like it is, you okay. know. Okay. Waited on it and boom, pregnant. Boom. And it was like, what? Yeah. Oh my gosh, this is, this is happening. This is happening, right. This is happening. We were... I both in shot like we literally like were like what like you mm-hmm. grabbed me you held me up, uh, we hugged we embraced and we were just like floored right. we were just we couldn't we couldn't believe this couldn't is believe happening. It. Yep. And then the thing wow this is the actual the doctor gave us three months three months and here we are in the third month and it's third just like month. God wow wow only God only God only God, only God. yep and so. What an amazing, amazing journey. Yes. So that yes, was the indeed. start of our that new was beginning. The start. That you know? was the start. How were you feeling in that moment? Um, I was very excited. I was like, wow, you know, because, you know, just tr- going over our journey here and reflecting over everything. And, you know, I know I've said it before on you know, another episode, but I was like, when God is ready, he mm-hmm. is ready. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Is. There's no stopping nothing. Uh-uh. It's just Boom, boom, mm-hmm. boom. Yep. And so, you know, here we are, you know, we got our crib, um, we got engaged, we got married, mm-hmm. we did a nice big public wedding. And then um, here we are, you know, starting this journey, you know, and, and desiring to be parents and starting parenthood. Mm-hmm. And God blessed us, you know, in yes, such a did. special way. He and, um, you know, we find a lot of people wait years they're trying and trying yes yes and we were stressing you know in the beginning of this and it was Mm -hmm. just like we did not have to wait that long you know right um and it's kind of like what were we stressing about you know because ultimately god knows the best timing for us to have a child and so timing um it his timing is the best time always you know he could be just we always say this he could be just waiting to you and your spouse are ready for that that time because you never know what comes with that child, how much work it is, right. um, how much stress comes up with different things that goes on appointments, you know, making sure the child has food and all this stuff. So God is making sure you are ready and your spouse are ready. You know, you're ready to connect in that way with him yes. and prepare for that child. So, yes. So, yeah. So I was I was very excited. I'm just like, wow, this is really about to happen. You know, yes. we're about to be parents. Yes. You know, it's exciting. You know, yes. you just and then of course, you know what we do. We like to wait. Of course, a lot of people tell you wait two months before you tell anybody. I want to say we probably told mom, mom and daddy, Mouchette, right, Mouchette, mm-hmm. your parents, right. Mm-hmm. Um, so we probably told um, Monique, I want to say told mom and dad a little early. My parents, we actually surprised on Father's Day that year. Yeah, um, I do remember that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we surprised, you know, my dad. It was within his gift for him and mom to see the surprise. So, yeah. So it was it was a very exciting, exciting mm-hmm. time. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, wow. What a journey. Um, So all of that happiness, you know, we're excited. We're doing all these wonderful appointments. We're going mm-hmm. to these appointments together. Yep. Praise yep. God. I, may, I was able to be at every appointment with you and I take you there. I for that. 
Um, and so this 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 day, the day that the assignment was made known to us was a day like no other in mm -hmm. our lives. Um, yep. October 12th. And this was the day that we found out that, you know, our son, our firstborn, RD3, would be born with a bilateral cleft. I, well, at the time, they knew it was a cleft lip and cleft palate. They didn't know, mm -hmm. like, all the full details, but they could see it was definitely a cleft lip and cleft palate. Yes. And I tell you, that morning, I'm going to just go into that day. Um, we woke up getting ready to go to our appointments like any other day. We was planning to go to the appointment, go grab some breakfast somewhere and just spend some time together that, you know, on, on these appointment days and just kind of reflect on this wonderful journey. Mm -hmm. um, and so this particular day, I recall going out into our garage and, you know, I got Monique in the car and then I go over to my side, get in the car and I start the car up. And then I realized that one of our tires is really low like the air is really low mm -hmm. and i'm just like what the heck that's random and i was like all the days that this could have happened why right. today the day mm -hmm. that we have our doctor's appointment right. and so i was beginning to get frustrated already but i was like okay we'll you know we'll go to our appointment and then we'll see if we can schedule to get this look at maybe i'll go put some air in it after an appointment because we were literally trying to get to the appointment mm -hmm. and so um so this is how our day started so i was already stressing just want to make sure that me and my wife and my unborn child is safe um and so we you know took our journey um to the doctor and um we got there on time and stuff and then i was just planning in my mind hey it's a gas station right next next door I'll go over and put some air in it after this appointment and then we'll see if we can call and get a appointment to get this, this vehicle serviced. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> so yeah, so, uh, so you want to tell what <laughs> happened next? Uh, wow. Well, I mean, that was just, uh, the enemy, like literally, um, starting an attack, sending an attack. <clears throat> It was a spiritual journey indeed. Mm -hmm. um, and literally tried to break us that day because there were eight things that happened mm. that day. And I remember writing all of those things down um, just to be able to look at it later. Wow. Like this would have <laughs> broken anybody. Yeah. Um, like you said at the beginning, first of all, I'm thankful to God that you were able to be with me at every appointment. Mm -hmm. um, Praise God. God is so good. Um, literally eight things. The enemy tried to break us. The day started off, as my husband said, with low pressure in the tires. And it turns out there was a nail, a nail in mm. the tire. Yeah. We didn't know that at the time, but low pressure in the tires. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Let's get to this appointment already. We get there. Um, we're waiting for the doctor to come in. They had done um, a scan. The anatomy scan was mm -hmm. scheduled for that appointment. So that's a 20-week um, anatomy scan. We must have been 21 or 22 weeks at the time. Um, and that's where they go over everything um, to make sure everything is um, intact and growing and developing as it should. Um, and when they did all of the scans, um, taking pictures, um, doing everything, da 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 da, da. Mm. Um, Then we had to sit and um, sit with the doctor. And he came in and let us know... Um, that, um, you know, heart beating well, um, they can see this and that, mm -hmm. um, do, um, doing well. Um, however, um, they did see that our child will have cleft lip and cleft palate. Mm. Um, yeah. and I think everything else after that was like a blur. <laughs> it was, <a> blur. <laughs> it was kind of yeah. like, wait, what? <clears throat> and, um, we both were like, what, mm -hmm. you know? And he said it again. It was just kind of like, like you could hear probably like a, a, a pin drop. We just kind of gasped, like kind of like, of course you, I'm thinking like, how could this happen? Like, this is our miracle baby. Right. Um, this is our blessing from God. And, um, so the blessing from God that we have is not going to be like, quote unquote perfect mm -hmm. you know how you how you you think and it's like wait what um and he's like well everything else looks good um it's just this and we want to refer you over to maternal fetal medicine at the time i wasn't 35 yet um i was right there though um 
And usually you get referred over to high risk when you're 35 and over. Um, But they referred me over to high risk at that point once they realized that this is what was showing on the anatomy scan. Just because they do more detailed anatomy scans and they can actually go in and see more clearly what's going on. It's a level two ultrasound. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened that day. We were just trying to absorb everything. We we had never even um, heard of CLEP. I mean, for me, I got to ask you um, your stance on that. But for me, I never heard of cleft lip and cleft palate other than from what I've seen from advertisements on television, maybe from other countries. Mm -hmm. So it was just unbeknownst to me, um, my ignorance to this to this um, community um, and um, which ultimately became a blessing, but at, in the beginning we were just clueless. Yes, we, we had were no idea like the journey we would have to take. Um, so that's number one. Um, and then I remember um, after um, you know receiving the news, we kind of just sat in the car yeah. for a moment, like yeah, trying to take it in. Took it in, like wait, we gotta, we we already know we gotta go fix this car, but now we just got. This information, this news. this news. I remember feeling like, where did I go wrong? I remember you saying, um, what? Like, how? Because I know my baby. And I just feel like, where did I go wrong mm-hmm. in this? I felt like, what did I do wrong? Like, yeah. was I exposed to something? Um, did I ingest something? Um, what did I immediately you feel guilt because mm-hmm. you feel like, what did I do to my child? Because right, right. every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord. Mm-hmm. So what did I do? And you immediately take that on. Um, so that's how I was feeling in that moment mm. when when that was brought to us. So that's number two. We got the tire. Then we got our child is going to be um, have cleft lip and palate. Then on the way to go and fix the car now. Yes, I can tell that. Okay, I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you say that. Go ahead. Yes, this situation because I'm behind the wheel and like it was kind of an experience. Because so, mind you, naturally I'm trying to still, even though you know I'm hurting inside, uh, I'm still trying to be strong for my wife because I know she's yes. hurting even more. I wanted to ask you, you how did you feel saying? in that moment? Um, and so, so yeah, so I had to pretty much put my feelings to the side. And just try to be strong for my wife and uh, make sure she was good. And um, on the way over to we were able to get an appointment at the dealership um, to fix the tire. And um, on the way over, um, we're getting ready to turn into the parking lot um, well, into the street where um, the dealership is located. And I remember, you know, um, we're in the turning lane, we're getting ready to turn. The light um, stopped. I mean, the light changed green um, in the turning lane. And so I paused for a second. My dad always tell me, wait a second, just in case you got to mm-hmm. drive for yourself and others. Mm. And so I still to this day remember, you know, my dad's teachings in that. And so this particular reason, something told me, just wait a second. And then and then so I waited and then I decided to pull off. And then as I'm pulling off and I'm actually turning, a car runs the light mm. and literally like I can tell you, like I don't even know how that car missed us. Only only way it missed us was because of angels. The angels yep. Because I I I lost control because I I could have sworn the car had hit me, and the car was coming on Monique's side of the car. It was on yes. the passenger side. Yes. And so, literally, I felt like angels grabbed our vehicle and mm-hmm. moved it out the way. And all I remember is just stopping when we made the light. I stopped for a second, like, what just happened? Mm. And I took a breath and I'm just like, wow, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And shaking up a little bit just by that, um, thankfully, the location we were trying to get to was just r- literally right there, like a second away. Um, and so we continued there. We was able to get the car service and we just sat in the waiting area and was just like, just taking everything in. It was just like, mm-hmm. what is going on today? Like, mm-hmm. this is not a normal day No, for us. We've never had a day Spiritual warfare. where th- where we had this much fighting spiritually, mm-hmm. <laughs> fight, mm-hmm. fighting um, going on, you yep. know? And so 
And this this is not the end of the day. Not the end. <laughs> not the so end. what else happened that day? We go I back mean, <laughs> so after that, um, we went ahead and we got the car situated. But, I mean, we were still shaking. It was like the car almost hit my side, mm-hmm. pregnant. And yes. it was like literally the angels like you said, move that car out of the way. Mm-hmm. And on the way back home from getting the car fixed, um, and actually at that appointment, I remember the guy who took care of the car, he had um, a cleft lip yes, that was fixed. that is true. That is yes. true. And I we were like, wow, God, like, look yeah, at you. It was just presenting like, us with oh, someone who was part I of the cleft totally family. I forgot about and that. And... It was it like, was there. it was right there. Something that we would not have noticed before right. at all. We immediately notice now as club parents. And yeah. it's like, you wouldn't understand <laughs> unless you're part of the community. Yeah. But it's like, now these are details um, that you see, mm-hmm. you know, and some something that we wouldn't have noticed before. God put it right in front right of in us, front us of at us that appointment. At that appointment. Yeah. And, um, and this is like right after getting the news. Right after getting <laughs> the news. Same exact day. Same so it's day. just like, wow. Like, wow, right? <laughs> so on the way back from there, um, we almost got hit again mm-hmm. by an unmarked police car. Yes. That was. Uh, and then the, the cop was looking at me like I was in the wrong. I was just like, how right. am I supposed to. See you coming. You are <laughs> yeah, right. it's like, <laughs> and so it was just like, we need to get home. And then wasn't it a train situation too up the street? Something was going on with the train. It could have been. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm ready to get some food and get home. Just take it to go. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> it yes. was just too much. Yes. Too much. But we didn't mm. actually um get food. I think we waited until we got home because when we got home, um, you had checked out a bill um from Sprint, and mm-hmm. they actually had charged us um so much more for the phones we weren't using. Oh. <laughs> so you was on the phone phones. with them. Oh my goodness! You was on the phone with you. them. Um, I'm staying away from those contracts. Oh my goodness! You. you was on the phone with them, arguing with them about those phones that we didn't use. Mm-hmm. But then when we finally got to the food, it's like, all right, we need to have something. Um, yeah. You know, we both didn't feel like getting in the kitchen. It's kind of like, let's just do something quick. Let's order pizza. Mm-hmm. So we ordered pizza. Then the wrong pizza was delivered to the house. <laughs> I'm glad you wrote all this down. It's too much. <laughs> the wrong pizza was delivered to the house. Wow. So at this point, you're just like, okay, I need a glass of wine. I can't do this. Mm. Um, of course, you was having the wine. I, I probably right. had some apple juice. So I don't remember. But you uh, said, I'm, yeah. you said, baby, I know you ain't drinking, but I got to have a glass of wine. I need something. So then... You um you have the wine and then the wine's still on the carpet. Oh lordy! <laughs> oh my goodness! Y'all here to see? And this then, is why I forgot about all this stuff. <laughs> right, <laughs> so much. You were upset <clears throat> um about the pizza being delivered wrong, um but I believe you was you still I think you got it fixed and they delivered the right pizza or did you just go ahead mm. and eat it? I don't even remember. I think they probably brought us the right pizza. I think they brought us back the right pizza. At that Mm -hmm. point, you were just done with the night. You had the pizza. And then later in that night, you got sick. So that's how the night ended. You were sick. I was sick. You were sick. You don't think they did something to that pizza. So (laughs) You never (laughs) know. know. Exactly. Oh, my goodness. But you were sick. Mm. So that's literally, I just went down the list, like, everything that happened today. What a day. From starting off with your tire low to ending being sick, you know, and fighting on your child is, you know, going to have a journey. Mm -hmm. Wow. So, yeah. So that is like, wow. So what a day. So as you see. That was the day we received the news, the assignment. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and this is just one day. Oh, my goodness. One day. One day. We thank you, God, for your for the strength you give us. Cause yes. That yes. could have broke anybody. It any, really could have broke anyone, anybody. Any, anyone. And where we are now spiritually, like, that wouldn't have bothered us at all. Like, mm-hmm. we would have cast that out in the name of Jesus um, mm-hmm. now. 
Um, but man, did God have to build us up to get us where we are now. Right, right. Um, we are strong. We are warriors, um, prayer warriors for God. And we wouldn't have been here had we not gone through the journey that we had. Like nothing, like nothing. We we try to live in the spiritual, not the natural. Mm-hmm. And we try to come at everything with the blood of Jesus. And literally just looking back at everything. This was a spiritual battle. Yes, yes. Spiritual battle. And this leads into my next question for us. Um, um, Like, I know where we are now, Mm -hmm. you know, and how God got us to where we are at this point. Yeah. But what changed, you know, in our lives and in our spiritual journey, what changed after receiving that news and going through that day? What changed? I started praying more. You started praying more. Mm -hmm. Mm. I started covering my womb. Yes. I was not covering my womb Mm-mm. like yeah. I should have mm. and it gave the enemy access mm-hmm. it really did Yeah, I should have been covering my womb from the moment that I knew from before really from before mm-hmm. you conceive you should be covering your womb and covering your child I started doing that after mm-hmm. I got the news Yeah, and speaking against it because I wasn't ready to receive it. Yes. Um, I wasn't ready to receive that. Um, and of course, now we know, you know, that we are without spot or blemish. We we speak that mm-hmm. um, all the time, those prayers. But these are not prayers that I was praying mm-hmm. before. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're a royal priest and a royal generation. Call on this darkness into his marvelous light. These are prayers mm-hmm. that we are praying mm-hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Um, But we were not praying them before and God had to build us up to that point so that there were no cracks. There's no way for the enemy to get in. We had to build a fortress around our home, around Mm -hmm. our marriage, around our children, Mm -hmm. around everything in our life. We had to build a fortress around. So we literally had to start at that point. And God was like, listen, it's time. It's time for y'all. I need to rise y'all up. Mm-hmm. I need to get your attention. Mm-hmm. This is the journey that you're going to have to take to, so I can build you to be where you need to be. But mm-hmm. that's what changed my prayer life. Um, became so so much stronger. Yeah, so much stronger. Praying every morning, at five a.m. I would get up before work, be in my closet for at least an hour, praying mm-hmm. not just for myself. For there were several friends that I was also praying for to conceive. And um, just praying over my family, um, mm-hmm. praying over every aspect of our lives, our cars, our homes, every aspect of our lives. I just wanted God to be involved with. I didn't want the enemy to have any access. Yeah. And that's what changed in me. What about you? Um, I mean, just um, prayer. My prayer life definitely changed as well. But I had to grow up in, in my shoes as a husband because, um, you know, it was a new journey, you know, mm-hmm. being a husband and just being having to keep your wife lifted during something like this. And and in a sense, hide your feelings, you know, and make sure you, um, you know, encourage your spouse and lift them up during this time. So it was to me, the most difficult part was just making sure you were ready in case this is what God's will was for our lives. Mm-hmm. And so I constantly just. You know, we had a lot of conversations over that. We and, did. Um, you know, and that, that probably was the hardest part because mm-hmm. I know you were speaking against it. But um, yep. in my mind, it's just like, this is what they're saying. You know, I know God can fix it. He can fix anything. But mm-hmm. what if God wants this to be our journey? Yep. You know, like, are you ready to receive that? Right. You know what I'm saying? And so working and trying to speak that into your life and make mm-hmm. sure you're ready, it kind of prepared me to be ready. Yes. You know, I didn't know what exactly this journey um, entailed and what was ahead. But I just like, obviously, if this is what God wants for us, you know, he thinks we're we are strong enough to handle this, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what was going on in my head. Yes. Um, during that time. So now I know you were talking about, you know, how you speak up, um, speak over the womb and all yes. that great stuff. So some really great memories, you know, that I have even in all of this was, 
you came up with this beautiful um, prayer yes. for RE3. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you, you do it over Ray now. Yes, you do it over both I of them. did it over Ray. And so, well. um, mm-hmm. you know, would you mind giving us a few bars? I don't know if you know. You don't, <laughs> I know it's a longer one, but you can at least give us a couple bars from it, a couple lines. Um, well, a I beautiful, call it the um, declaration. Yes. The declaration. And... Um, This is something that uh, God gave to me for RD3 to pray over him. Um, And I learned how to declare the decree. Make it a decree. Make it law. As God speaks, it is done. So if you are created in the image of God, as you speak, it is done. And that's what I had to learn. So if you're speaking negativity, you're thinking negativity, that's what's going to be done. I had to learn to speak life, to speak over everything Mm -hmm. in my life so that it is done. It is so. So that's how I learned to declare the decree, the the law. Mm -hmm. So um, we spoke this over RD3. And then, of course, I was still speaking over my womb, even um, for for Ray. Mm And we declare the decree that you are blessed. You are created for God's glory. Let God's promises be fulfilled in you. God is your creator and maker. You are created in his image. God has formed you in my womb. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God's Mm. peace shall be upon you. God's spirit be within you. God is your shelter in the womb. That's just a little bit. That's a little bit. That's a little little bit. bit. If you want to hear more. You'll have to reach out and, you know, we can definitely, <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely, definitely let you know more. But when I tell you that was beautiful, you know, to see that. And we actually did it at the baby shower. Yes. You know, we had Monique do it over the womb in front of everybody. And I mean, what a beautiful, um, you know, statement to declare over your child. Yes. And so I just knew our son was blessed and he had the perfect mother. You know, in his life and God has blessed him, you know, to have such a nurturing and caring mother to do such a thing and to speak, you know, so much life, you know, into his life. One thing I do want to share that God gave to me and um, I would encourage every mom, every future mom to do this as well is to look for Bible characters um, Mm, that have learned that have lessons that have taught you strength, mm-hmm. hope, peace, joy, um, that God has done so much for them to have influence in your child as well. And to whatever their strong point was, ask God for that in right. your child. So, for example, um, wisdom like King Solomon, mm-hmm. a heart like King David. Strength like Samson. Now, when she says strength like Samson, y'all should see RD3 <laughs> moving all kind of furniture and stuff oh in the house. Goodness. I mean, we cannot lock this man down. Oh, my goodness. He'd be moving everything. So yes. when you talk about strength, this joker <laughs> and his brother's right behind them moving yes. stuff. So I'm just like, you spoke this over them. So that's why I we know. can't keep them in their little I play know. area. I know. You know, so <laughs> just make sure you know you you know what you're praying for. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but these are things that. Um, and they, I, there are several Bible um, characters here that I have. And whatever their strong point was, um, I ask God to bless our mm-hmm. sons yeah. in that way. And I think that's great. If you have daughters, what does the woman in the Bible that were strong um, as well right. speak those things speak. over your daughter? Um, they need that. They yes. need that because they cannot pray for themselves right now. Right, right. So they need that from um, before being born. Yeah. And something that we still have to do, because we did talk about that, which we can work on, is um, making a poster, you know, yes. that we can put in both boys' room. Definitely. But, um, but yeah, so that's that's amazing. So my question, um, my next question for us, too, would be, why do you think God chose us for this journey? Ooh. Um, definitely, I mean, right now I know. Um, then I didn't know. Um, but now I know it was to make us stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, he thought we were strong enough to handle everything, mm-hmm. to handle the journey. But this journey would also increase that strength. Yeah. Um, we would draw closer to him. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, our prayer life now is like never before. Yes. 
um, we would invite him back into our lives because I don't know about you, but I know for me, I was neither hot or cold, Mm -hmm. you know, and it's like God was like, get out of this lukewarm state and do what I asked you to do Mm -hmm. and um, um, get out there and start praying and not just for myself, for others, um, for other women, um, for other women in the cleft community. Um, And then also being able to bless others um, Mm -hmm. with our foundation, um, other families, not just in this um, country, but countries all over the world where um, cleft lip and cleft cleft palate are prevalent. Mm -hmm. We want to help those families as well. So it it gave our lives purpose. It gave our lives focus. It it strengthens us spiritually. That's what God was raising us up to do. Not to just sit in the same life and just do it over and over and over. Mm -hmm. Now we have a child with this journey now, um, what we learn and what we take from this journey, we can use to help others in this journey as well. So, yeah. What do you think? Man, um, I, I I recall even saying this when trying to encourage you, encourage myself, was like um, God chose us because he didn't want us to, um, I think a normal birth would have just been like everybody else. It would have just been normal, you know. Yeah. It been, you know, it's exciting. Of course, yeah. it's a gift from God. But this had to shake us up a little bit, yeah. you know what I mean? And it made it, though it was a journey, it made it a little more exciting because we didn't know how we were going to make it through this journey, yes, you know? Yes, yes. Um, and so I think we were also chosen um, because God knew we, we would shine light on, on, it. Yes. on this. We would bring From so much one. life to this. From I mean, we one. made sure we shot pictures. Yes of RD3, like every month, we yes. made sure we shot pictures when he came home from the hospital. Yes. Um, and just so, and we shared those pictures. Yes. We didn't hide from it. Yes. You know, this is our son. Yes. This is our journey. This yes. is our gift from God. Yes. We're going through this journey as a family and we're yes. going to be strong through this with God and our, on our side. Yes. And so God knew that, you know, mm-hmm. we, you know, and, um, and it's so much sharing to do, you know, Still from more. your blog posts, you know, yes. you shared a lot of stuff to help a lot of people. Um, I know numerous, uh, clef parents have mm-hmm. already reached out to many, you many, many. Um, with questions, many. a lot of clef mothers. Mm-hmm. Um, we ended up launching your business, you know, the, yeah. your um, t-shirt business, mm-hmm. let that t-shirt be art. And we started it with the wonderful Bible verse that we're going to share yes. um, for this episode. Um, but we started it with that first, you know, shirt, you know, making mm-hmm. it that Bible verse. Yes. Um, and so and then on top of that, I've probably through our journey have about three films that God has wow. <laughs> allowed wow. me. One is already probably in pre-treatment mode. Um, wow. And then, you know, the other two, you know, because it's still stuff going on right, right. now as we speak, it's mm-hmm. still stuff that we just came out of in 2020. And so mm-hmm. naturally I've been documenting all that stuff mm-hmm. um, and we have to share it. You yes. know what I'm saying? That's why God allow us to go through it because yes. he wants us to share it and bless. And yes. then you have books, yes. you know, that you're Absolutely. also coming out mm-hmm. with. Several uh, books for our son um, and his journey. Mm-hmm. And... um both sons, really. Yes. Uh, but also for my my journey right, as a right. cleft mom. Oh, yeah. So, so, so much exciting so things. Much, so many exciting so many things. Exciting what things. the enemy meant for evil, God turned it around and used it for good. And then the foundation. The uh, foundation. We cannot wait yes. until we are able to move forward with that because yes. that's going to be such a blessing to so yes. many. Yes. And so I'm excited about that. How I do want to go back to when RD3 was born, um, what your reaction was Mm -hmm. um, when he was delivered. You know, um, (laughs) I do want to say when he was delivered, um, he has to be delivered by Mm C-section. And it was because of my prior myomectomy and um, doctors saying there was so much scar tissue there. Um, um, this is the way that they wanted to um, deliver him. That was the safest. Yes. yes. Um, I wanted to deliver vaginally, but at this point with everything going on, it was like, <laughs> okay, listen, if this is the safest way for him to come, we just want him to be here healthy and um, doing absolutely wonderfully well. Mm-hmm. So um, 
that was a very traumatic day for me. Um, his delivery, um, it was painful. That C-section, I felt a lot. Mm-hmm. I felt the tugging, the sawing. Oof. I felt the cutting. I felt it all. And I remember holding your hand, looking at you like, I can't do this. Oh, man. I don't know if the, the ladies want to hear this part. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is a C-section. Yes. You know, um, people think that, oh, a C-section is boom, boom. Yeah. Um, now, for Ray... Um, I didn't feel anything. Yes. Um, that was like the smoothest delivery, even during COVID. But um, but backing because up of that to, previous surgery, right? Yeah, surgery. Back backing up to mm. RD three, I felt everything. Um, mm. it was to the point where um the anesthesiologist saw my face, and she said, "Okay, I'm gonna give you some more." Yeah. Um, and she gave me more, and it felt a little better, but it was still a lot that I felt. Um, especially the pressure at mm. the end to to. To allow for him to to get here. And then when he got here, we looked at each other. We said, this is God's will. Mm -hmm. And we welcomed him. And, um, oh, my gosh, we both fell in love immediately just to have him here. The journey is here. He's here. The journey that we went through a pregnancy has ended. Now we're going to take him through his journey. Mm -hmm. And. What the enemy tried to put in our minds as imperfect became perfect in that moment. It was just a yeah. perfect moment um, of joy, of love, a love that we never knew right there in front of us. Like, God, thank you for this beautiful gift. And then they put him on the table. Yeah. And up. you were able to interact with him a little bit. I couldn't interact with him at that point. But that hurt me. So much yeah. when they put him on that table and they took him to the NICU. Mm-hmm. My heart was broken and no mom should ever have to go through that where you give birth to your child and you don't leave with them. Yeah, They go to NICU. I was crying. I was in tears. It was heartbreaking for me. So I had a traumatic delivery um, and then I didn't get to take my baby back to the room. Um, our baby back to the room. It was heartbreaking. For yeah, me. yeah. For me, um, I just remember it being very scary because uh, when you were, you know, going through all that pain, and this is just like, uh, is it supposed to be like this? You mm-hmm. know, and I'm just trying to be strong and and keep you comfortable and at peace. And then, whew, yeah, just to see that look on your face, you know, it was freaking me out too. And I'm just like, God, please get us through this, you know? Mm. Um, and then when our son came out, I just remember freezing, like, there he goes. Mm-hmm. This is, this is real. You know, mm-hmm. he has the, the bilateral. Well, at that time we just knew it was cleft. We didn't know what it was called bilateral cleft. Cause he had it both sides. Um, and the, uh, the cleft palate. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm just like, wow, okay. And they, and oh, and the nasocephalocele, mm-hmm. yes. Did we, I don't know if we knew that at the time, but they told us like within maybe a few weeks before, few weeks we, before. we were going to give birth. So wow. to add to, <laughs> to everything, add to everything else, everything. we go to an appointment and say, oh, and it looks like he has um, <laughs> uh, what they <laughs> call an encephalocele. We were like, what? what? Yes, what? Something else. Something else. Right? And you'll notice, everyone, that it's three things, yes, right? So I don't know things. if you caught that. Three things. That's how you know it's from God. Yep. Because God works in threes. Yes, you he know, does. Um, especially in our lives. I know yes. for a fact he works in threes. But and, and speaking of, we're talking about RD three, Ronald Dills the third. He just happens to be the third. Mm-hmm. Um and so yeah, so I remember being frozen in the the nurses and they were like, You can come touch your son. And so I'm like, Oh, that's right, okay. And so <laughs> <laughs> I rushed over and I remember RD three grabbing daddy's finger. It was oh, such a precious so thing. Precious. And man, it was just like this is this is so precious. This is the journey, like this is Wow. You know, we have went through so much to get to this point yes, and now so our blessing was here. Yep. And so, and he was so precious. And so we just wanted to take our baby home, but unfortunately we couldn't take him home. Mm-hmm. We couldn't even take him to our room. Mm-hmm. And when he said he went to the NICU and right away. Um, another thing that I'll share too, which was very difficult was our parents didn't know what, what was going on. Yes. And so they didn't find out 
mm-hmm. what was going on until actually we were rolling um, RD3 out on that little table, that little casing they had a man for the NICU. And they got to see him for the first time. And it's like, to me, to be the father, to see their reactions, like, what? You know, that that was kind of like, wow, yes, this is what we, you know, what's going on here and there. And then, you know, they received the news well and were strong at that moment. And but that was that was kind of hard to you show the parents at the first on time. Because yeah. I wasn't there. I was still in the OR. Yes. And we didn't tell our parents, which, you know, if that was to happen again, we may probably, but we didn't want to stress our parents out. We didn't want them to be worried. Um, Mm -hmm. And so we just kind of just kind of took this journey with God. And, you know, in a sense, we just told the parents to keep us lifted in prayer. You know, we constantly said that. And, um, you know, they probably saw us like uh, we broke down a few times, but they had no idea what was going on. It was Um, very it was a lot. Yeah. For for the first pregnancy, mm-hmm. we went through a lot together. And yeah. um I know for me it was very emotional, it was very stressful. Mm-hmm. And I did not want to bring that same stress and emotion to, to my family. family. Yeah. Especially Neither. because sometimes they can say things and they don't realize how much it affects you. Right, right. And I did not want that energy. Yeah. So I just gave it to God. Now, with the hindsight, I would definitely have involved them in this journey because yeah. we could have used the strength and the prayers. prayers definitely. But prayers, for the yeah. first pregnancy, it was a lot for us to take in. Like yeah. we didn't understand. We it was a lot of understand. appointments. Mm-hmm. It was um just a lot of anxiety, just a lot <laughs> going on. And um it was just very hard. I wouldn't I wouldn't want any new mom to go through or new dad to go through what right. we went through. It mm-hmm. was a lot. Um, but it was a a spiritual journey. Um Definitely. First and foremost, and that's something that we had to learn and go through, mm-hmm. and it prepared us. Um, it strengthened us. Our marriage is stronger than ever. Um, it prepared us for our second child, and that was like smooth, so, so smooth. smooth. So wrapping up, we're going to get ready to wrap up here. So my final question for us would be, what advice, what advice will we give um, parents that are going through a similar situation, you know? Um, well, first to hear that your child, your gift from God, um, is going to have a journey or whatever that journey may be after, um, cause there's a myriad of things, um, that can come up on, um, your, your pregnancy skins. Um, I would say put your trust in God. Don't react Initially, and it's hard to say that because you hear something, you don't think about yourself in that moment. You think about your child. I know right. that's for me. You think about your child, and like, wait, what? Let something happen to me, not my child. Mm-hmm. Um, in hindsight, um, the way God reacts, the way Jesus reacts, He waits mm-hmm. and He's very patient, and then He reacts. Yeah. Um, you take the information in process it, pray about it, and then react. Mm -hmm. Um, Because after you think about it, um, I promise you, you will react totally different different. than how you initially did. Mm -hmm. Um, In hindsight, um, I wish I just um, just took a deep breath and said, okay, Lord, this is our blessing that you're giving us. Um, Help us through this journey. Um, Instead of asking them, why this, why that, this, that, what, what was I doing? What was I doing here? Mm-hmm. Um, that's what I would change. I would definitely encourage moms to take a deep breath, put it before the Lord, um, write down even how you're feeling in that moment, and then go back to it um, in prayer and just present it before God because you're going to need God on the journey. You won't be able to do it without him. Mm, um, right. Amen. Involve your family members, um, those that are close to you, not everybody, but those that are close to you, your parents, um, close sibling, um, and of course, involve your spouse. Of course, involve your spouse. So that's what I would encourage all new moms that will have a journey with their child to do. And the only thing I will add is, um, you know, for 
the, the, the males out there, the kings, you know, um, what all I would add is just, you know, make sure you keep your your wife lifted up in that. Um, make sure you pray over her and pray over the baby as much as you possibly can and check on her because oftentimes she's holding those feelings inside and she's not sharing with you all the time how she feels. So it's it really means the world when you're able to check on her and make sure she's doing well. This is also probably a great time to do little extra special things to make her feel special. Um, I mean, it can be as little as writing a poem for her or a note or getting her some flowers, whatever, you know, um, but just do little special things to keep her lifted and make her feel special. And, and you all going to be, you're going to be blessed through this journey. It's going to make you stronger than ever. Your faith in God is going to grow further than you can ever imagine. And, um, you know, and just embrace the journey. Now, if you have questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, Monique Diltz does have a website. She has plenty of um, blogs and, and wonderful information that she shares on this website. You can find it at www.moniquediltz.com. That's moniquediltz.com. Um, you can always go by her website and check out some of those blogs. All right. Hope you all enjoyed this episode. I know it's a more heavier one for us, um, but hopefully it was a blessing for you all. All right. Now, as we transition to our wonderful Bible verse, Moni Dilts, what you have for us over there? This episode's Bible verse is taken from Psalm 139.14. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Hope you enjoyed our chat tonight about the assignment that God has given us in our son, RD3. And we yes. can't wait to talk to you again. God bless you all. Have God a wonderful, you. wonderful oh, day. Thank you, Monique. Yes. Have a blessed and wonderful day, everyone. All right. Now, until next time, we're out. Thank you so much once again for tuning in to another episode of God, Family, and Business with Ronald Dills II. And Monique Dills. Until next time, may God continue to bless your faith, your family, and your business.